Today I have the pleasure of speaking with the founder of Enthusiast Gaming. How are you today, Minash? I'm doing right, quite well, JC. How are you? So I guess you're pretty active right now, and your your audience must be growing logarithmically. Let's talk about the impact of COVID nineteen and your bottom line. Sure, absolutely. Um, we definitely have seen a huge surge in traffic over the you know since COVID started. Everyone quarantined at home with a lot of digital devices and technology, and gaming is tremendously up. So yeah, that's. Uh, we're setting all all-time traffic records across the board. So you're looking at being one of probably the most exciting types of stock to actually for investors to get their claws into right now. Can you talk to us about some of the competitive advantages uh, that are currently being offered? Say you're you know sitting around and you're looking at new stocks. Yeah, I mean, I think that right now we're we have positioned ourselves in a industry that is somewhat recession proof, somewhat pandemic proof. Um, and because it's all digital, it's well equipped for the future and it keeps on growing. So, you know, it's all about as uh, the Wayne Gretzky quote of seeing where the puck is going versus where it is. And that's how we've positioned ourselves for years. And, you know, that that's paying off in spades right now as we just continue growing. So, um, you know, I foresee over the next four or five years, just continual growth based on where the sector is headed and how we're primed at the forefront of this. Well, of course, you're my favorite esports uh, stock. You always, I, I'm an enthusiast for enthusiast gaming, and you've done so many wonderful things during COVID-19. I don't really know where to begin and end. Do you mind if we just touch on your uh, your announcement for a virtual concert, uh, uh, the COVID-19 Relief Fund? Can you tell me what you're doing with the Relief Fund, where, that, where those funds are, are, are directed? So the first thing is to note that there was something called the Twitch Stream Aid, which happened a couple of weeks ago, which we were a partner on. And that was a fantastic charity in which we partnered together with Twitch to bring together a lot of different celebrities and influencers. Uh, we brought on our end um, our Call of Duty team, our Fortnite team, uh, some of our sports uh, ambassadors like Richard Sherman, uh, the quarterback, uh, Darius Slay, also in the NFL, um, and together we were able to raise around a, uh, $3 million, um, and we had 16 million views on Twitch together combined. So that was a huge initiative, and immediately afterwards, we started to get all kinds of inquiries coming from charities, from uh, a lot of different organizations looking to do live-streamed initiatives while everyone's stuck at home. And thankfully, we we struck upon a, an incredible musical performance opportunity where DJ Zhu, one of the top five EDM artists in the world, um, and his uh, manager, who was the, the former manager of Kanye West, um, were really excited to work together with us, thinking that the EDM type of uh, music lover has a lot of crossover with gaming. Uh, and DJ Zhu as well. So he became a, a uh, brand ambassador and content creator for Luminosity, our esports brand. We announced this huge thing happening tomorrow evening uh, where we expect a lot of people to be showing up, as you'll probably see. Um, and he's going to be dropping a single live on the front page of Twitch, amplified by our, our, our entire viewership. So... Uh, it's going to be an exciting opportunity, and we're already getting new inquiries based on this musical performance. So one thing's leading to another as uh, a lot of these um, opportunities arise in this new and exciting world. So I think it would be uh, probably accurate to describe you as the new record company. Of the, yeah. You know, that's what you yeah. are. You've got yeah. all the entertainers. You've got everybody watching you. You're yes. vibrant. You know, you've got your finger on the pulse. Uh, I was going to ask you about your uh, event for tomorrow night, but you've answered that question. So <laughs> let me just jump in here and ask you about your um uh, your esports event. You usually do the largest esports event of the year in Canada. Are you still planning on doing that, or is it too early to, to really say at this point? It's really hard to know because it, like, we're going to have to, as of right now, it's completely planned. We've talked to our largest sponsors and partners, and they're all fully on board. They've had to cancel a lot of events, and they all are, are hoping desperately that by Q4, 
uh, they could still keep us in the schedule. And as of right now, nothing has changed. But what we all know together is that we're going to take it day by day along with the Ontario government. You know, if if uh, are we at full capacity or will the government say things like, um, you know, you could have mass gatherings, but you can only have up to 30 percent of your regular audience. So we'll be monitoring the situation. Um, and in case we can't do it, um, we have a full virtual conference um, lined up as kind of a plan B because so much of the event already happens online, right? Last year, over the weekend at EGLX in October, we had 7.2 million people watching on the front page of Twitch to our esports tournaments. So there's, even though you get 30 to 40,000 people at the event live, you get over 7 million watching on Twitch. So that will be happen happening in any case, um, as well as our investor conference that usually happens alongside of it. Why not do it digitally if we need to? That's, that seems to be happening all over the place. So uh, we live in a digital world. We'd love to right now continue doing it physically, but if we have to, we will do it digitally. Well, I know we're certainly planning on attending or participating in your investor conference. Um, so your news flow has been staggering. Would you mind if I just touch on some of your latest news releases and maybe you can just give us a quick update on this? And then I want to jump back to your event tomorrow night, if you don't mind. Um, so you announced a, a partnership with a company called G Fuel. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, G Fuel is... Um... There are several different energy drinks involved in the space. G Fuel, I would say, is the the one that seems to be dominating right now in terms of their authenticity. Uh, you'll see them all over Twitch, all over esports, um, and they haven't done it in a way that's just logo placement. They've found a way to make themselves the cool brand. So when the, the CEO, Cliff Morgan, um, and our team sat together back in uh, December, we really had a meeting of minds and felt like there's, you know, when two brands could trust each other, trust the other side of management, that we're going to have a great working relationship and continue evolving, bringing ideas to each other. So it went, uh, it, it went forward uh, really nicely. We announced it and, you know, it's a, it, it's an exclusive uh, as the energy drink sponsor of Luminosity for the year. It's a, a big deal for us to our bottom line, and it's a, it's a great partnership. It kind of shows the power in terms of finances, um, what we're able to create from esports sponsorships. Well, I, I'm drinking bio still right now. I, I think it's, I think I need some G fuel. That sounds wonderful. Okay, and then you most recently uh, you added two major global esports communities to your advertising platform. How is this going? Tell us more about this. Yeah, well, we, we have a regular inflow every month of new sites and communities that join our network. And some of them we decide to um, to allow in as partners if if they're large enough and they move the needle. Others we acquire. Um, and there's a, that's that's been the constant kind of roll up that, and aggregation that we've been doing over the past five years. Um, and that continues in terms of getting, we're always on the lookout for very strategic names uh, strategic uh, sites and communities that really uh, make an impact for us. So, you know, those were two of the latest communities that, that we were able to announce. And of course, we're going to have new ones as it's a regular part of our business of, of being able to show the new communities that have joined and widened our reach even further. Well, I, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but something most people may not know about you is, you know, you, you also have a, your master's in psychology. So what we would love to know at Investor Intel are your thoughts about COVID-19 and how that may have changed the gaming and esports community, probably more particularly the esports community. Is there anything intriguing that you can share with our investor audience on this matter? Well, I think it's really brought it to the forefront in, in terms of uh, entertainment form. We always knew that... Um, for the younger generation, this has become the predominant form of entertainment, which is why, you know, if you look at kind of the, the economic impact as a sector, gaming is larger than movies, TV, music, etc. cetera. Uh, so we've already known that, but we always found that there were people who, um, you know, they were more focused on sports or, or other forms of entertainment, and they didn't necessarily have the time to invest and learn about this. What's really changed now due to COVID is that a lot of sports uh, players, a lot of just uh, general folks who, who who were spectators of sports or, or other entertainment now are cooped up at home and have learned 
to love uh, gaming and esports as well. So that has had a huge boom between you know th some of the numbers of the traffic uh, and those that we're getting um, inbound inquiries from show us both anecdotally and quantitatively how massive this has been COVID for pushing it really to the forefront and to the mainstream. So I, I think it just has accelerated the adoption and the growth of gaming and esports, whatever it's already had. Um, it's going to heat up tremendously, I think. Over the next year, I really believe over the next year, we're going to see a heating up of this space. Um, even in, in the stock market, in, in terms of the um, deal flow, in terms of private investments and just new companies popping up, I think there's going to be a lot of attention given to, the, to this digital space. Well, I, I know I certainly, just in listening to her, like, wow, it just makes you want to go check your stock out immediately. And so let's just leave everyone. I, I Your event that you're hosting tomorrow night, you mentioned here you've got Twitch Streamer of the Year, Mr. Fresh Asian. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Some of our investors may not know who this is. Would you mind just finishing up by telling us the highlights of tomorrow night? We're going to try and get this video out to everyone uh, later today or first thing tomorrow morning. Yeah, so Fresh, he's a, a great kid from Australia who is um, signed to our Luminosity brand, one of our Luminosity players. Uh, he won Twitch Streamer of the Year. Uh, he really broke out from you know a smaller audience to one of the, the top. I think he's number two in Fortnite right now. Uh, so to be number two in all of Twitch's Fortnite is uh, quite large, of course. Um, and funny enough, he's also, he loves to DJ. At his 18th birthday, he DJed for you know at the party. So um, he was excited to participate along with DJ Zoo in this collaboration. And and you know music and this younger demographic, a lot of that culture and lifestyle is now kind of um, overlapping with each other. And there's a lot of crossover happening between all of these different segments in in its own kind of unique millennial type of lifestyle and culture way. So uh, Fresh is involved in that along with DJ Zoo. So it'll be, it's exciting. We're breaking new ground here. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the update. It's good to see you and I hope you and your family are doing well. Thank you very much.